What's going on, Godzilla Nation? This is our Godzilla. Welcome back to another AFL Tips and Predictions video. The footy frenzy is finished. We finally got to have a couple of days break for me to be able to get uh, get the tips out for the next round, which is fucking beautiful that I could have a little bit of a break and not rush my tips. However, with that being said, we know that coming up, there's going to be another footy frenzy. So uh, enjoy the break while we can, I suppose. Without further ado, I'm going to stop wasting your time. Time to get into this week's tips and predictions. Okay, so as we usually do, we have a look at the round that was before the round that will be. I was pretty, pretty abysmal. I only got five. We uh, tipped GWS, they got smacked. We tipped Port Adelaide, they got smacked. We tipped Collingwood, they got smacked. And we tipped Fremantle and probably should have never lost because there was a whole controversy about that game. But ticks all around for the rest of the rest of the round, but not good enough. However... There were two teams this week that tipped eight. Here they are. Kamal19 and Tritter H both tipped eight tips. Congratulations to you both for being the highest tippers of the round. Looking at the top 10, Matt Lamb24 tipping seven has now taken a two point lead in front of it is what it is. Taj River Taylor123, El Snako. And myself, all respectively tied for third place. Onesie Lover, LH3, and Motherfuckers, all tied for fourth place. Then you've got Gannon, who is ninth on the ladder, but technically fifth place, if you want to go down that route. And then there's a few on 66 in Cripple, Marcus, Judalicious, and Yi. So, I would say... I would still give hope from 13 up. Anything could happen. But some some tips this week made some big moves. Like even Madge Tigs and VNC Tipper and that big moves were made. But looking at this week, there are some games that are so 50-50, I don't know where to land. I do not know. Gold Coast and Carlton. It's at a neutral ground. It's at TIO Stadium. Blues are the favourites to win, but I feel the Gold Coast can get up. They brought back some big players too. They were missing Swallow, they were missing Harbrow, they brought Lemons back in. So the three players that were admitted heading into the Richmond game have been brought back. However, Carlton bring back Jack Martin and Pitt Net. I'm going to back Carlton. I'm going to back them by 16 points. This is a real 50-50 game. Either team can win, and in the kind of grand scheme of things if Carlton fans want to see Carlton play finals this year this is a game they have to win Saturday night at Metricon we have Western Bulldogs taking on Melbourne I don't know whether does Max Gorn come back for this game turns out they haven't got the lineups for the rest of the weekend out yet but very curious to see whether Max Gorn comes back because not only do you have Max Gorn with the PCL injury You've got Luke Jackson, I believe his name is. He's out. Braden Proust now is apparently possibly carrying an injury. So Melbourne's ruck like stocks, they've, they've fucking, they've plummeted. They've gone to shit. In the meantime, you've got the Bulldogs who are on the rise, but Melbourne have played some good football without Max Gorn in the team, which is actually very surprising. Both teams here vying for a top eight finish. I think both of these teams well in contention to finish in eighth spot overall. It's going to be hard for the team who doesn't get up. Who do we back here? The Bulldogs could come out and cause some damage, but Melbourne just be thereabouts. I'm going to lock in the Bulldogs only because I think Going in without Max Gorn here could be a huge deficit for Melbourne. If Max Gorn gets named, I could potentially change my tip. But as of right now, we're locking in the Bulldogs. Adelaide Oval, Port Adelaide taking on Hawthorne. Now, only 3% of people have gone with Hawthorne here. No Dan Houston and no Laddams in the ruck. Does that play big enough factor for Hawthorne to be able to sneak in for a win? Oh, it could. It sounds stupid, but it could, because Laddams has been tearing it up. 
I'm going to back Port Adelaide purely because when you compare the two teams on paper, Port Adelaide are superior this season. But I'm going to go early with my upset of the round. I'm going to go for Hawthorne to defeat Port Adelaide. I'm going to lock that in right now. TIO Stadium, Essendon, Richmond. Richmond for me. I know this year I am yet to back against the Tigers. And I turned around and told you guys a while ago, I don't always back the Tigers. But uh, it's been a load of shit so far, hasn't it? But I think even though we struggled to get the start we really wanted against the Gold Coast... Like, we got the start we wanted. I thought we were going to break that game wide apart, and then we just let the Gold Coast roll back in. But I think when you have a look at the football Richmond have been playing, especially the last few weeks, dominated the Bulldogs, dominated the Lions, were in the contest against Port Adelaide for three quarters and laid down, and pretty much got off to a very slow start against the Gold Coast, but still managed to win by a few goals. So... Taking that into account, when you have a look at that compared to what Essendon have been doing, Richmond is the smart bet. Richmond, for me, they need to get a steady run home the next five weeks in order to lock in a top four. And I think they do so quite comfortably this weekend for the Dreamtime game, a game that I always look forward to every year. Essendon being defeated here is going to catapult Richmond into the direction they need to go. That's all I'm saying. Optus Stadium, Fremantle, Sydney. This one is interesting. Because even though Fremantle got done by the by Carlton. I was going to say the Gold Coast because I was still thinking about Richmond for a second then. But even though they lost to Carlton after the siren, Fremantle have been playing good football. And I thought against Carlton with the start they had, they were going to have a huge, huge win. Sydney, on the other hand, could go up to Fremantle and cause a bit of headaches. Where are Sydney near there? This is a 50-50 split. For me, anyway. I'm going to go Fremantle only because of the home turf advantage. And I know that's a cop-out. I know it's a cop-out. But I think Fremantle have started to find some form back at Optus Stadium. And I've, I've got to back in that, that form. Adelaide Oval. Geelong, and I'm not even going to even mention who Geelong are playing, because Geelong pretty much have a bye. They're going to rock up and just... They've got the bye this week, okay? They've got the fucking bye. At the Gabba, Brisbane St. Kilda, I'm going with Brisbane. Jack Steele on Lockie Neal is going to be a huge contest to watch. I think St. Kilda have the pace to defeat Brisbane. And I think another cheeky upset of the round could be St. Kilda over Brisbane, but... In the grand scheme of things, when you look at both of their seasons this year, St. Kilda upsetting Brisbane isn't out of the realm of possibility. But I think Brisbane at home, especially with the momentum they've started to build the last few weeks, going to be very hard to beat. The equation happens again. Opta Stadium plus West Coast equals a win. And I haven't been wrong with that for the last five or so weeks since they've been home, so... Be interesting to see once they do leave home because they've only got a record of two and three this season away from Optus. But while they're there, never going to back against them. And the Gabba plays home for the end of the round with Collingwood taking on North Melbourne. I'm going to go Collingwood. I think that explains itself really. Losing the way they did last week, they're going to come back really, really strong. Collingwood are one of those teams very similar to the likes of Geelong, the likes of West Coast, the likes of Richmond. If they lose a game they shouldn't lose, they come back the next week so fierce. Collingwood are going to be hard to beat. Even at a neutral ground, North Melbourne are going to struggle against them. I, I think it's it could be a pretty sizable game. It could be 30 plus points, Collingwood's direction. So to recap who I've gone with, I've gone with Carlton, Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Richmond, Fremantle, Geelong, Brisbane, West Coast, and Collingwood. Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below, as we have done the last few weeks. Your certainty, your upset of the round, as I predicted. Hawthorne over Port Adelaide. Definitely upset of the round. If we're looking at locking in a game, Geelong versus Adelaide. I mean, anybody at this point... 
A couple of you in the comments have been saying it to me the last few weeks, and I agree. At this point in time, anybody who plays Adelaide, you lock them in as the certainty to win. Even when it comes to Carlton taking on Adelaide, I feel Carlton even walk away with the win. That's how bad Adelaide are playing right now. And if I've got any Adelaide supporting, you know, subscribers out there, I do apologize. But you guys have been fucking terrible. There, there's no denying that. If you have been enjoying these, hit that like button down below. Some of you have been reaching out in recent videos saying you'd like to see more AFL-based content. So uh, keep an eye out on my channel because I've got a video coming out soon that's a little bit different to what I've done before. But it's definitely AFL related. So if you want a bit of the, you want a bit of a taste, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit that bell so you get notified every single time something brand new does hit the channel. If you want to follow me on social media, those links are down below in the description. Feel free to go check me out there. But that's it from me, guys. I'm out of here. Good luck to your teams this weekend. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.